I wanted to, to link up with what JP just said because it's like right now, you know, we heard a lot of information regarding nutrition. A lot of things that we've maybe never heard before, we partially heard, and there's so many things that I was certain about before and I got confronted, you know, with intermittent fasting, with ketogenic diet, a lot of things that I experimented with as well. But my first instinct was, you know, to judge something in advance, which is a prejudice, because based on your old beliefs, and a belief, it says the word, it's not knowledge, it's a belief. You believe it, but you're not 100% sure, but when you hear something over and over again, it becomes a truth. And that's where actually is, is the hidden thing that you don't actually know it's a belief, you think it's the truth. And it's your truth or the truth of whatever the experience you had, culture, school, your parents, whoever, and now you think that's the way it is. And that's a very big danger because then you're not really ready for what's coming. And then when we get confronted with it, a lot of times it's just like, whoa, it's, it's, it's a lot. You know, we just really need to take time to actually experiment with these things. But just understanding something is not going to get you anywhere if you don't take action. That's what JP just said. You're the only one that's in charge of your life. That's why an I am possible starts with I. You know, I am, it's not this is possible, that is not. It depends on your approach. You know, whether you say something is possible or it's not possible, you're right. Because the person that said it's possible, it's like, I'm going to find a way to make it possible. But it's not me, I'm incapable of doing it. It's just, I don't know how to do it. So I just need to change my approach. So everything starts with action. Everything starts with things you will do. That's why it's so important that whatever we share here, you know, we're trying to help you to really get into action and practice it instead of just intellectually understanding it. Otherwise, we're just philosophers trying to talk about life and the world and things. And this is just, you know, just in theory, but we want to really be practical about things because then it becomes reality. And um, so that's why I just wanted to I'll get back to this point, but I just wanted to start with, you know, just being in the now. And I just said, you know what? I didn't prepare this. I'm just going to share this poem and then get into, you know, a couple of the points. So it starts like this. The key to success is laying in your hands. Anxiety is just experiencing failure in advance. And it's a waste of creativity. You're visually creating your own misery with mental imagery of negativity. It kills your productivity, limits your abilities when you ignore the upsides and focus on deficiencies. I felt so vulnerable and threatened because I focused so much on my pain that I was forgetting my blessings. I stopped suppressing and repressing, started expressing. I stopped the dwelling and regretting, started progressing. You're depressed and you're stressing because your present ain't pleasant. Life's a lesson, keep on stepping, keep on sweating. The future is created from second to second. Today's a gift and that's why we're calling it the present. I stopped complaining and blaming, started embracing. I stopped delaying, waiting, debating, started creating. I stopped evading and escaping. I stopped explaining. And when I started facing, my fears started fading. The power of now. That's as far as I got. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So it's like, I, I really think a lot about these topics because I try to get some of the basics. I just realized that there's so many things that are kind of basic or we think that we heard them before, we think we understood it before, and we always catch ourselves getting back into this circle, into this loop because we've just been conditioned for so many years to think wrong just to understand how something works is not enough to get into your subconscious. And you always operate. It's like an autopilot. Once you learn something wrong, it takes a lot of time and practice to get it back. It's just, just I just understood it and I can get it. That's why I try to brainwash myself, first of all, by speaking about these things, by hearing these things, by immersing myself, by creating poetry, art that always deals around similar topics and subjects because it makes me look at it from a different perspective and debate because that's also something. When you want to look for evidence, right? If you believe something and someone confronts you with new information, that's the way it is. And you're curious, you know, it's good to, to take that old knowledge as a ground base for now challenging that new idea. Because it's not just about, okay, I'll do it, but I don't really understand it. I don't really know. So it's gonna be a very loose, but when I challenge it and I say, okay, why? Okay, but this, but that, and now I debate, and now bit by bit, I actually start to break down that wall that I had before because now I understand why this is wrong, why that was wrong, why that was wrong. I think it's a very important process. And I think that it's, it's important to understand these basic things that we sometimes, just like in nutrition, 
I meet so many people, and I was one of them. I used words I didn't understand. You know, check, like you say macronutrients, protein, carbs, uh, calories, uh, metabolism. Okay, what is metabolism? Explain it to me. What am I? Explain it to me. Oh, blah. And that's also one thing. When you teach something, that's the best way to learn something or to test if you really understood it. Hey, you read something, I understand it. Okay, explain it to me. Well, the thing is, and now you have to actually bring back with your own words, but now you're challenging your own understanding. Or you can just repeat something that you heard and someone asked you a question that wasn't asked, on, you don't know, and now it's challenging your knowledge about that thing. And that's why I think it's super interesting to, to really look at these things and, okay, what is metabolism? What is this? What is that? What is belief? What are emotions? Where does it come from? What is thinking? And then you can actually break it down, go back to the source, and not just on a shallow level, oh yeah, think positive. Uh, but why are you not thinking positive? Why are you thinking negative? Where does it come from? What's the source of all of this? And that's something that I've been really trying to understand for myself over past, the past 15 years. And every single time, it's just like when you read a book and then two years later you read the same book you feel like man I didn't read that because you grow as a human being you see things from different perspectives and certain things were blind to you that's why I think it's so important to re you know like repeat actually the same principles the same knowledge and there is a model of the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is something that I hear so many people use and talk about and then it's like there is one thing to understand it but there's also the second thing to really be able to work with it and I want to use I need to raise the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> so I'm gonna put my drawing skills to the test. So since I'm from the Ivory Coast this should be easy for me to draw. Oh, wow. oh. Ah. <laughs> so, we could see this. Do we have different colors? <laughs> we could see this as a representation of our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. That we say, the elephant is our subconscious, because it's the biggest part that moves everything, our emotions. And this is our conscious mind. This is what we you know, want. When we get confronted with a new idea, with a new concept, and doing things so wrong for the past years. Or, for example, I was shy because I'm afraid of something. I'm afraid of staying on stage, for example. But now I read something and I understand, okay, this is something that I need. It's going to put me in the right direction. I, I make a cognitive decision that this is something that I want to change. But even though I understand I shouldn't be afraid, I still feel the emotion and that emotion is this elephant so if now for example you decide you want to go to the right but the elephant wants to go to the left where do you think the journey is going to go to it's going to go to the left now if there's a small mouse right here and this elephant is scared of that mouse even though it makes no logical sense the elephant is going to run you can try to guide it however you want you're not going to be successful and a lot of times we have these small things in our life where we feel that logically it doesn't make any sense. But that's the thing, it's just like subconsciously driving us. And elephants are a really good example for the power of the subconscious because if you go to India or to Africa, you have a lot of elephants that they use for labor, for example. And what they do is they put them on a chain when they're babies and they separate it from their mothers. They can't really go to their mothers, so it's a painful experience. And they're trying to, you know, get free from that chain and they can't do it. And they try over and over, over again for a couple of weeks, couple of months. Till the point is reached where they gathered enough evidence and they say, I cannot break this chain. I'm not strong enough. And what happens in the process, they grow. And they reach full size, an adult elephant, and they could just with one time break that chain and they never try it. Because in their mind, they think, I cannot break this chain. And it's crazy. You can check it out. It's on YouTube. You can see it. The elephant made this decision. I cannot do that. You see that with gorillas, for example. They're in cages for years. They open the cage. They look. They see the open cage. They don't believe it. They cannot believe that they can go outside because the experience of reality is different. And these are animals with instincts. And they're still limited by this. And that's 
Very interesting when you look at that and we try to see like what are the chains that are holding you back? What are the things that you decided that are a truth for you but subconsciously? And that's the very important thing. You think just because you logically think this doesn't make any sense. I want to go on a diet. I'm going to eat this. I'm not going to eat that anymore. But where does this emotion come from? And when we look at this, I'm going to get back to that. It's like, okay, an emotion comes from somewhere. An emotion is a clue for a thought that you had. Because when we go through life, We make experiences. We talk to people, we're in situations, we try something, it works, it doesn't work, whatever. We make any type of experience that we confront and then we have emotions. Someone makes a compliment, ah, oh, I feel good. Someone criticizes us, ah, oh, I feel down. This happens, you get stuck in trap. Whatever it is, something happens and you have an emotion. But there is a very important missing link here that we're not aware of. It is judgment. We judge everything that happens because the same thing can happen to someone else and it's the meaning they attach to it that creates the emotion. But if we think that it's that thing, now you're a victim of circumstance. But if you realize that this is happening, now you actually can take control back. But if this is subconscious and you don't really know that this is happening, this is an automatic pro program that's running in the background, like we said on a computer. It's just some old, outdated computer program that has been running since your childhood or since your conditioning from culture, from the environment, and you don't really know that you're judging that situation. So now someone gives you a compliment and you can say, hmm, you know, I'm skeptical because I don't know if this person, I don't really like them, they might mean it. In a so this can affect your emotion just based on how you judge it. Now to go a little further on that model, and I'm just breaking down, you know, like certain, certain principles that I want to, you know, like talk about after because it's very important that we understand these processes that happen in the back. Because just saying, just change your mind. Just think positive instead of negative. Why? Where does it come from? That's why I want to get. So, oh. Ah. Okay. So here, is a model of your world, because there's not the world, there's only your world and your view of the world, your subjective opinion and vision of the world and what you perceive and see. And here you have, and this is a, people, things, situations and places. You could say, this is your external world, this is your internal world. This is you, you're either happy or you're not. Now it looks like someone with a nose that's unhappy. But you're either happy or not. <laughs> and um, now if we go back to the model we had before, you could say something happens here. It creates an emotion, but here's the judgment, right? But what is the only thing that is happening in your internal world? The only thing that you have control of, but that no one sees from the outside, is what you think and what you feel. These are the two things that happen internally. I don't know really what's happening inside of you. You're the only person that knows that, right? So here is what you think. How do I? Okay, I'm just gonna write in blue. Here's what you think and what you feel. And the intersection between your internal world and the external world is what you say and what you do. That's what people can see. And based on that, they can judge how you feel and what you think. But Now, what happens is most people, they try to fix things or change things here and they put conditions on here. So if other people change, if things change, if situations change, if the place, if everything here, it's going to make me feel better. So you try to have control on these things here and you don't realize that the only power that you have is inside. But 
what you feel is determined by what you think. Because judgment is nothing else but thinking. So if someone says something or does something, I'm thinking, what does that mean? What does that person want? And based on what question I ask, I will get a different answer. And that's going to change my mood, how I feel. So that's the only thing that you can control here is what you think, what you have to watch, what you have to be careful of. And here's what you feel. So that will affect what you say and what you do. So if someone comes and insults you, what does that mean? What does that they must have had a very rough childhood. Maybe I should be nice to them. Now, because of the way I judge this situation, I'm going to say or do something completely different. That's going to have an impact on my world. And that, again, can be a circle that goes in one direction. But if I now someone says something, or even worse, someone criticizes me, and I'm like, man, what does that mean? Maybe it means that I'm not good enough. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I'm in the wrong place. Maybe this is not the right business for me. Now, because of the way you think about this, it affects your emotion. And what would you say or do? Maybe you say, you know what? I should stop doing this. Maybe this is not for me. And now you're going to find proof because obviously you're not going to get more results. And this is now a self-fulfilling prophecy because you're not, you see, that's what it is. And because of this wrong judgment that we're doing based on what? Not enough, not enough information. We're not smart enough to be able to judge something because if you look back, there's so, so many ways in nutrition, for example, you're eating based on your judgment, how healthy something is. What does that rely on? Your knowledge. The more you know, the better judgment you can make. But if you don't improve, if you don't look, this is another point that we're going to get to. But just let's just say you judge. So if you have poor judgment, you will create poor emotions and poor actions. And that's why it's very important for us to understand this process because it's happening subconsciously. It's happening subconsciously. You're doing something and you're just creating this. Any questions so far? Okay, cool. <laughs> so now... To come back to this, what we can actually do, I want to do a small exercise. Some of you might already know that, but it doesn't matter. Just look around this room and just try to memorize everything that is black. Just try to memorize everything that is black. Okay, now close your eyes. And now tell me what's yellow. Now tell me what's green. Now open your eyes. Now look. You see there's certain things here. Yellow, green. Normally I do that with red, but because there's not, I mean, not much red, actually there's something here. But what that tells us is that our subconscious mind picks up everything that is in this room. But it only shows us shows us what we're looking for. So it's important because when we say we're looking for evidence, usually we'll look for evidence that supports what we already believe, not something that conflicts with it. And at the same time, it's just helping you to make, to make better choices, better decisions. So if you, for example, say, I want to buy a new car, white BMW, all of a sudden you see that car everywhere. That car was already there before, but you didn't see it because your brain didn't see that as important. Now, all of a sudden, you see it everywhere. So now, if you look for black, you look for black, and you'll find black, and you'll blend out everything else. That means, is that reality, or is that your perception of reality? When you observe something, when you make judgments, when you try to you just to see, okay, what's happening with my life, you're just blending out so much and you're just selectively picking certain things and it's recreating certain experiences in your life. That's why I just, I had this metaphor where if you're looking for the red in your life, these are the stop signs, these are the, you know, like the red flags, the red lights, the, the things for stopping you, the things that just like, should I start with this new business? Should I, you know, start in this relationship? Should I get engaged to this person? Should I, you know, start with this changes? Amount? Whatever it is, or if, are you looking for the things that are making you stop? Why it's dangerous? Why it's risky? Why it's going to be a waste of my time? Why it's not going to work any, anyways? Or are you looking for, I call it the green things, the, the things that are making you move forward? What are the reasons why I want this? And that's how you connect to the vision, to what you want to see and everything. So these are the two things that you can see this and completely eliminate that, or you can see this and eliminate that. That can be to a goal, but that could also be your experience of life. What do I have in my life? That's why being grateful is looking for the green, is looking for what is great. A lot of times people don't appreciate anything unless you take it away. You don't appreciate of, of your health, but all of a sudden you have an accident and you're in a wheelchair for two weeks and you see what a pain it is. Now you appreciate walking. 
You appreciate people in your life. You appreciate your health. You appreciate wealth. You appreciate so many things like we don't have to wait until it's gone. But because when it's gone now, all of a sudden, the attention is there. It was there the whole time, but we didn't really cherish. So it's, it's like as if it wasn't there. So that's why it's very important that we think about, okay, when I pay attention to certain things and they create my reality, and we say, what I think creates my emotions, what is thinking? And I heard that the first time from Tony Robbins when I was listening to Personal Power 2 when he said, thinking is nothing else but the process of asking and answering questions in your own mind. That's it. And if you're asking yourself, is that true what he just said? You ask the question. If you ask yourself like, if, if, if you say, I don't feel good, the question before was that, how do I feel? Do I feel good? Do I not feel good? So the questions you ask yourself are going to get you answers. And the quality of your questions is going to give you the quality of answers. So if something happens to you, a judgment is like, what does that mean? So I'm starting a project. I'm going into a meeting with someone and I'm not getting the project. And I'm coming out and I'm asking myself, shit, man, why don't I get this meeting? What's wrong with my, with, with now the questions that I'm asking are going to give me answers. So if I ask myself why this person didn't want to get maybe, you know, maybe I'm not good enough. Then the question was, am I good enough? If I ask myself, how can I learn from this? What, what's good about this meeting that just happened? What was good about my day? A lot of times, because we want to be successful, we're very, criti we're very critical of ourselves. We always try to look for what we can improve. But to do that, sometimes we just focus on the negative because that's the thing that we want to improve. So you went to the gym for three weeks and now you cheated for one day and you're like, oh man, that means like I'm not disciplined. And then, you know, so because you, you make a wrong judgment. And that wrong judgment is because now you only looked at the one failure instead of seeing that 14 days in a row you were successful because you didn't ask yourself that question, because you didn't ritualize it, because you didn't create a system that actually reminds you of these things. And it's like, you know, there is, there is one book, I love it, it's called A Complaint-Free World. And in that book, they talk about the habit of complaining. What is complaining? Complaining is for looking at, for everything that is negative. You complain about yourself, you complain about life, about the weather, about your boss, about your wife, about your children, about anything that is wrong. And a lot of times, you, you can fix so much by just focusing on the positive. Even when you want to give feedback to people, it's just something that I do, is I always ask myself, what is good about that and how can it be improved? Instead of, what's bad about this, right? So when you complain, is making everything focus on the negative, focus on the red, and that becomes your experience of everything of your relationship, of your job. So they have a challenge where they say, for 21 days in a row, because there is this study, some studies say that in 21 days you can create a new habit. Some say it's 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. But in that book, they say 21 days. And they have a band like this. And basically, you're trying to catch yourself every time you're complaining. So if you complain about something, whatever it is, you, you can have a thought, but not express it. So then every time you complain, you have to do this. And you just switch it just to have a physical action because sometimes, you know, you, you, you realize things, but you forget it very fast. So, so now you're conditioning. Oh, shit. Yeah, I complained again. So you got to go 21 days in a row without complaining. And if you break the cycle, if you go four days, now you complain, you have to start in zero. Most people, it takes them an average of 60 days before they can actually do these 21 days without complaining. And the most important thing is the awareness that you get. Man, I'm complaining a lot. It's something that you're not even aware of. It's just like when you start counting your ca calories and macros. Well, I'm not eating a lot, and I'm not. And then you start to, oh shit, oh that adds up a little bit here, a little bit there. It's like people that say, I'm not spending any money, but at the end of the month, I don't, I don't have no more money. I'm not, I'm not buying anything. But it's like a lot of small things add up to a big. And every single day, these small habits that you have of focusing on a negative, creating small negative experiences, adds up, accumulate where you feel like. I feel drained. I feel negative. I don't feel like, and it's, it's not as easy as just think positive, but that's the first step. Awareness. Shit, I'm, I'm not complaining like a hundred times today. So that is the first step, catching yourself and then trying to control that. So that's, you know, like the question that you ask yourself. So now what are better quality questions? You know, because that's also one thing when you, for example, just wanted to get into when, when I, um, when I came to Dubai to start my own company, I was here for the first nine months and I started a company with a partner in Abu Dhabi. And then it didn't turn out the way I expected. And then I was at a point where I was literally like, 
I didn't have nothing. I, you know, I was homeless, you could say. I didn't have no money. I didn't know where to go. And I was thinking, should I go back to Germany? And um, I had a friend of mine. He was a pilot for Emirates. And he said, you know, you can stay here. I have a two-bedroom apartment. You can just stay here for a couple of months. And I was there. And I literally, for like two weeks, I just I went into red zone. I just started complaining this or that. I did, you know, like, why did this happen to me? Why did I trust this person? Why this? Why? And it created these negative emotions because all you do is you're creating images. That is something about the subconscious that is so powerful that I knew intellectually. But then when you're in a situation, because you react so fast out of habit, because you've been doing things so often, you don't even realize that you're doing it wrong. And the thing about the subconscious mind is it, it only understands images. It doesn't know if something is really happening or if you're just imagining it. It doesn't know if something happened 10 years ago or if it's going to happen in the future or if it's just your fear of what can happen. It just feels the image. Just like when you're a director and you create a movie. Just when even you watch a movie. You can watch a movie and you feel the emotions. You can get scared if you watch a horror movie, if it's a romantic scene. You see it if you're really connected to what's happening. You're feeling it as if you were there. But nothing in your real life changed. But you're the best director in the world because you can create that movie in your head and you're constantly doing that. But most of us, we're creating images of what we don't want. We're always, oh man, I hope this is not going to happen. And that's one thing that when you say, I don't want to, or you use a negation, it doesn't work. Why? Because, and that's, you know, the part about affirmations. I don't know, you know, those of you who know affirmation, when you say, I am possible. It is an affirmation. It is something that you state. Whether you, it's true or not, you repeat it to yourself. But a lot of people say, I'm not using affirmations. They're using affirmations all day long, just negative affirmations. So when you say, I, for example, am not obese, or I don't want to be in a relationship with someone that abuses me, or I don't want to, this is, this is what, how people talk all the time. I don't want to be broke all the time. I don't want to be, you know, at this job. I hate these people with a boss. I, was, I don't want, but what are you doing when you're doing that? You, you're creating an image. If I tell you now, don't think of a blue tree. Now you have to think of a blue tree before you don't think about it. So it doesn't work. So if you say, I don't want to, anything you say after that is the image you create in your mind. And you're conditioning that image so often that it's like this chain of this elephant. It becomes your reality, whether it's true or not. Now this is a state you're conditioned. That's why it's not even think positive. Stop thinking negative first. But catch yourself. You don't even know that you're doing it. That's the thing. That's so, it's, it, it's subconscious. It's blind. It's like happening in the background. So when you, when you just... Um, one second. I got so my zone. Yeah, my story, while I was like at that point, I was creating all of that. I was putting away the, how can I say that? <laughs> I was putting away the responsibility. And you know the word responsibility is your ability to respond. How do you answer to a situation? And they said that a problem is nothing but a question that doesn't have an answer that satisfies you yet. Right? So if you want to have the answer, you got to ask better, better questions. If you say, I need $10,000 by the end of the month, this is a problem. Why is it a problem? It's only a problem because you don't have the answer of how do I get $10,000? If you had that answer, this was not, it would not be a problem anymore, right? So that's the thing that everything we don't want in our life, and we keep repeating and repeating it. And then I was like, okay, hold on for one second. Quality question. What is good about this? That is something that I also learned before, but I didn't apply, especially when you're in a hard situation, something is emotionally very challenging, you go into reactive mode. You don't have time to really, because you don't create that habit. So I said, what is good about this? This is a question you can always ask that will focus on the green. Doesn't matter how bad something is, there's always something good about this, or there could be something good. So I said, man, shit, there's nothing good about this. And then I was like, okay, what could be good about this? And I was like, okay, actually I know a couple of people, I made some experiences, it could be worse, you know, I, I have a place where I stay. So once you start to focus on that and what is good about the opportunity you have right now, how can I use this for myself? So if you go in a meeting now and you want to sell a product and the person doesn't want it, what's good about this? How can I use this for myself? How can I use the information here? Because then I started to look back 
And I made the whole experience of that entire year. I shouldn't have trusted that person. I lost so much time. I lost so much money. But I'm like, hey, I came to Dubai. I didn't know how to, like my English was good, but I, I never had business conversations in English. I went, I had so many pitches, so many projects that went well. I got to know people. I blended all that out because I was only focusing on the shit that didn't work that was painful for me right now. But it's not the entire truth. So now I'm basically judging my life or my experience based on these 10% or 5% that were negative and not only on the whole thing. So I'm lying to myself. I'm lying to myself. And that is the thing that when we're lying to our subconscious, it thinks it's the truth. So if we're lying already, let's change the lie and completely remove these 10% and create a 100% vision that we want to feel and condition it. And that's why it's so important because people say, yeah, visualizing, uh, you know, law of attraction, this is bullshit because they don't really understand how it works. It starts with yourself and it ends with yourself. That means it starts in your brain. You need to see something happen before. Every single thing that you have been successful at, that you know how to do, we're talking about skill and passion. If you have a skill anywhere in your life, it's because you did it over and over and over again. You repeated it over and over again until it came into your subconscious. If you know how to drive a car, it's because you knew how to drive a car badly and go through the process so many times that now it became a skill. So if you say, I wanna start with this diet, I wanna start thinking more positive, I don't wanna use these, I gotta catch my words, I need to motivate myself. It's something that comes intrinsically only if you condition it so many times that it goes to your subconscious. And that is something that a lot of people are not willing to really go to the steps or they don't understand that this is the bridge, the, the, the gap that they have to go through. Like, and how am I on time? You can, uh, ten, ten okay, cool. Because I really, like, I've been consuming for so long content related to personal development, and then you go into here, and then you want to read something about hypnosis, and, and then you just become like, when you say a student, an academic student, you're not really a practitioner of something. But when you start to really apply things, then you go in depth instead of just going, you know, very far, but you're not really going deep. And you feel that you know a lot of things, but you don't really know. And there is something, it's like the different areas of knowledge for anything that you want to become better at or become good at or have a skill at or actually want to be part of you. If you just look at the different areas of your life and the wheel of life and you say, you know what? I see the perfect version of me like this. No matter what it is, you know, like my level of confidence, how my family life is, how I speak to people, how, you know, how I look, whatever it is. So there is something, it's called These are the different levels of competence. Unconscious incompetence. This is here. I'm eating healthy, but I don't know. It's, it's something is not. I'm not conscient. I'm not conscious that I have an incompetence. There's something that I don't know, but I don't know that I don't know it. If that makes sense. So Why you know? that you don't know it. <laughs> And now you get confronted with a new information. You speak to someone. You read something in a book. You watch a video, and you're like, "Oh man, I've never known this." So, or you make a very big mistake and you realize through that mistake that, oh shit, there's something that I didn't know how to do. That's why it's very important to always question yourself, to always go outside of your comfort zone, outside of the knowledge zone. Because when you don't really confront this, you can stay here very long. A lot of people, they have, I, they have beliefs and it stays like that because it's not challenged, you know? Whether it's racism, whether it is like a, a belief about the world, about people, about yourself, because you're not challenged. So even if you go into this meeting and you come out of there successful, you could have done it much better or much faster or get a better price or a better deal, but because you think, oh, I'm good at this, you know? So a lot of people, I heard it from a, from a sales coach, he said that he coached salespeople and some people say, I have 20 years of experience because I've been selling for 20 years. And he said, okay, what did you do differently this year than last year? 
Oh, no, I, I've been doing the same thing. Like, so he said, actually, you only improved in the first two to three years. And then you say it on the same level for 17 years. So you only have three years of experience because you never really updated, never really challenged what you think you know. Because you can always upgrade. So that's why a lot of people can stay here for very long. So that's why the more you confront that, the more you go outside of the people that you hang around with where everything is always the same and you just go outside of it, now you get challenged. You're like, oh man, there's something that, I, that, that existed I didn't even know. So now you're conscious that you're incompetent and you're like, man, now I'm aware that there's something that I don't know. So there's something you got to do there. You need to learn something. So now you start the process of conscience competence. So now you're starting to count your macros. Now you're starting to go to the gym. Now it's something every single time you put it, how was it? It was 70%, 10%, 20%, how many carbs can I? You always have to be conscious of what you're doing because it's not in conscious, uh, uh, unconscious because of German. <laughs> And it's like, it's not unconscious yet. It's not something that it, it's in there. Like any type of sport, once you develop a skill, it's unconscious competence. You, when you play basketball, you're not thinking about, oh, I need to do this with my hand. No, you're just looking at the game, you're doing this. Like when you're driving a car, you don't think about, you know, shifting gears, whatever. It's there, it's there. You've been doing it so many times. And that's the problem because here, people, that is the most important step here. It's taking action. Failing, adjusting, failing, adjusting, failing, adjusting until you make progress. And then you improve and then you make progress. You improve, you make progress until you reach your goal. And it actually becomes an unconscious competence. And that's something that a lot of people here, they try something one, two, three times and then they judge. I'm not good at this. Why? Because they expected that you want to play the piano. Anyone that knows that if you want to learn a new language, it's not going to happen in a week. You, even if you know that's the word in Chinese for unconscious incompetence, <laughs> in one week, you're going to be like, huh? Because you got to repeat it over and over and over again. That's why I said, when I do these songs and the poems, it's something that is conditioning you. And like a song. And you hear the song hundred times before, even a song you don't want to know. There's so many songs, I'm like, I don't watch TV, I don't listen to the radio, but I'm in supermarkets, I'm in the mall, whatever, I hear that song, and I'm like, dun, 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 dun. and I know the song, I'm like, what the hell? Just because you've been exposed to it so much, and that's what's crazy, because you're exposed to so many things in your childhood, in your environment, you're adopting things that you don't even know, they don't belong to you, they're not your children, you're just adopting them, and you signed a document, you didn't even know they were not your children, and that's what really happens. We're adopting beliefs, thoughts, and you know principles of people around us, why it's important to know who you're surrounding yourself with, because they have have an influence on you whether you want it or not the guards are down because they're your friends but that you do this work right here to take action over and over and over and over before it's easy it is difficult and that's why it's like I don't like this um, yeah just believe it and then it's just gonna happen it's not gonna happen you make it happen that's why it's I am possible not it is possible it's possible for some people for some is not but those that take action over and over and over again those are the people that become successful. And that's why I believe it's so important to, you know, to understand that it's a mindset, but it turns emotion into motion. And then you start really moving things in this world.